Hello my gorgeous makeup loving friends, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, hi. My name is Teresa. I love all things makeup, beauty and skincare and over on this channel every weekend we talk about some of the new makeup releases, specifically the stuff that you guys and myself found interesting. So I have to say a massive thank you to everyone who tagged me in content to discuss. Your names are being displayed on the screen right now. There would be no episode without you. I so appreciate it. But I also want to say a massive shout out to my YouTube community members. Your support means so much to me so thank you very very much. But my friends, we do have a few things to discuss because thankfully Thankfully, January is over and we're heading into February. So we're still seeing quite a few more like Valentine's Day releases. So people are really trying to get our money these days. But one of the first things that we saw, and it wasn't a massive surprise to me, was that MAC had reformulated their matte lipsticks. Now, I say it wasn't a surprise because they had had their matte lipsticks on last chance for quite some time. And no, they are not going to have their old matte formula coinciding with this new formula. This is the Maximal Silky Matte Lipstick. There's 39 shades on their website right now, and they're $25 each. And according to their website they say that this is a silky matte lipstick that delivers 12 hours of full coverage color and eight hours of moisture so apparently for the last four hours that you have the color on you won't be moist which is a really really weird word obviously they focused on reformulating their very very classic shades so things like Russian red which is let's be real a literal classic Ruby Woo which everybody knows but they've also included their more nude shades so things like velvet teddy etc I love that they've brought back things like candy yum yum and a black lip which I am really really interested in. So they have said that they have things like organic shea butter, coconut oil and organic cocoa butter in there which they say is their good for lips ingredients. So it'll be interesting to see what the story is there. I wonder if it's changed the smell of it. Now I have asked if anyone has tried these new formulas to let me know what they think and I did have a subscriber comment below saying that they really enjoyed it, that they liked the, the, the new formula so that is really really good to see. It looks like they're not changing the components it's still that like classic mac sort of a look i mean i'm kind of i'm i'm interested um i really liked their previous formula i had nothing against it but i really appreciate the fact that they are attempting to potentially innovate and change things around i know that a lot of people don't like changes let's be real i'm autistic i don't like changes either but i think that when you have such a saturated makeup market you kind of do have to try and, and, and innovate and keep things Things fresh so I appreciate that they're trying to do that I mean I, I've given out to brands before for like not updating their formula so I think maybe they saw this themselves and, and thought oh we can improve on it so uh, personally I think it's quite a smart move I'd love to see some more updates as part of their line I'd like to see them kind of reinventing some of their eyeshadow palettes maybe doing something else along there because you know I'm an eyeshadow hoe but to be fair I actually think this is great Um, in particular I'm really excited about about that black bullet I know that sounds really bizarre but like you try and find me a black bullet lipstick it is so so difficult just a black lipstick in general whether it is like a bullet or a liquid lipstick is so so hard to find and one that is comfortable and gives you like a, a decent level of opacity so do you know what I'm, I'm kind of here for that that's the shade caviar the black one and I mean it looks great on the swatches so I'm, I'm kind of here for it I love that they've kind of grouped everything according to kind of the color story the pinks are all together the nudes are together the reds are together the oranges are together I mean they've worked very hard on that like 39 shades that's quite a bit there I will say when you're looking at like say the pinks and they've advertised candy yum yum that's like the quite hot pink it does look a little bit different to their original one and that's kind of what I was wondering was that going to happen? Because any time that you change around a formula in any way, shape or tone, um, it's going to change how it looks. And, and that's not just like in terms of like how it looks on the lip in terms of like moisture content, etc., but also the color. So I was wondering if that was gonna change some things and it just looked like it's changed that ever so slightly. But I'll be honest, I mean, Candy Yum Yum hasn't been available for quite some time, at least not here in Ireland. Maybe it was uh, available elsewhere, but it wasn't available here. And I think that in general, 
people will be happy just to see it return, even if it isn't the exact tone. I, I, I think it's still tonally quite similar, but there might be a little bit of a difference. Uh, and I think depending upon obviously your undertone, it could look quite different. Personally, I'm definitely intrigued. I could see myself being very silly and getting a few things. I think the one, I mean, you know me lads, I love reds, but I already have like my Ruby Woos, my Russian reds and a lot of my Viva lipsticks already over there because <laughs> my lipstick collection is like literally just opposite me like as the crow flies not that the crow flies in my makeup room but you know what I mean so in my mind I'm like it wouldn't really make sense for me to have the same color but in a different formula so the one that I'm thinking of is caviar so if that does come here to like things like boots I absolutely would get the black bullet lipstick in saying that Sahil hates when I wear black lipstick he's like oh, you look so scary and I'm like yeah yeah I do I want to frighten people I want I want to look scary obviously they've chosen beautiful lip models for some reason they lost my number who knows uh, and the shades do look really really fabulous on them they've gone for some real classic neutral shades but I love how they've also advertised the purple and the pink shades as well which are a little bit less like wearable but I like that they're kind of going back into that 90s noughties sort of sensibility of makeup and I'm kind of here for it but when I put it to you guys 23% of you loved it 53% said not for me and 23% said that you already loved their previous formula I mean that's always the case but it's gonna be a little bit of a gamble as to how this all goes so shortly after Christmas Adept Cosmetics had kind of said hey we're coming out with something and it's going to be a flying fiddles palette which me being Irish I was like fiddles like the traditional violin here like and all I could think of was like trad Irish music and and obviously I get a little bit frightened whenever an American takes on something Something Irish I'm like oh no are you gonna be like diddly die da 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 leprechauns but thankfully that wasn't what they meant at all <laughs> they actually meant uh, it's a flower which I should have gotten based upon uh, the outside of the palette which had these beautiful uh, ornate lace flowers it looks so so beautiful and as is always the case with Adept Cosmetics you look at it in the pan and you're like yeah that looks fine there's parts of this that reminds me a little bit of a more updated version of the Anastasia Beverly Hills Makeup by Mario palette. Do you remember that? I mean, it, it's maybe six or seven years since that release and I never got that. That was not part of my makeup journey at the time. But I feel like this is a really updated version of this. But when you look at it in the pan, you're like, yeah, okay, that's grand. But they always get you on the swatches. God damn you, Adept, and your swatches. As I'm filming this on Friday, this is already available. It's $62. Oh, look at those swatches. I love that even in a static photo you can actually see like some of the duochrome multi-chrome there which by the way is so hard to capture within a picture and I appreciate the fact that they have swatched this on a deeper and a lighter skin tone that's very difficult for an indie brand to manage because obviously you have to pay people to do that sort of thing so I really really appreciate that um so apparently along with them stocking the flying fiddles you can also get their element 115 palette again for pre-order that was their um like alien themed palette which i oh really want and i also want this but i'm trying to be a, a good a good girl <laughs> apparently they are going to have some bundles up um so this isn't a pre-order just fyi this is coming out uh, now like as in it's available now if you want to get it you're not going to have to wait you're just going to have to wait for the shipping so however long shipping takes I think this is really really gorgeous um <laughs> I want to not want this if that makes sense um I have a lot of stuff from Adept Cosmetics and I'm kind of irritated with how much I enjoy their stuff because they are very, very pretty. Do I need this? I absolutely don't. I know I don't, but particularly when I'm looking at the video, which uh, you guys will see at this point, my stupid little heart is kind of like, oh, you're pretty. And I'm also managing to justify it in my mind because I'm like, oh, it's $62, it's $62. That's not that expensive. And when you take off codes, it's only like $56. And that's the thing. I'm like, okay, that's actually not bad. And on the face of it, it's not that bad. But then, then I get to play the fabulous game of shipping roulette. Uh, and taxes and duties and I'm like no Teresa that's that's just too much 
So as much as I want this, I know it's not actually sensible for me to get and I should wait because January was the longest month ever and I don't know about you guys, but like bills come out of nowhere. We, we have to fix a couple of things in the house. So I'm like, oh, it would make a lot more sense for me to prioritize things like my living space than to buy another palette. However, I think it's absolutely stunning. I don't think it's limited edition based upon what they're saying. I really hope it's not limited edition. I mean, they said that it's not a limited edition item, thank God. So they said that we will continue to make the palette as long as there is interest in buying it. So if you're like me, Fantastic, welcome to the club. If you're like me and you're like, I can't really afford to get this right now, I'm gonna have to wait until X number of months or whatever, or I may need to save up for it. That's totally fine, boo-boo. That's grand. You can still get it in a couple of months. It's not going anywhere, you're safe. So I love that. I love when brands don't do limited edition items because honestly, limited edition items somewhat wreck my head. Cause I'm like, don't you try and get me with FOMO. I also find for me, if a brand is not doing limited edition items, it's almost them saying like, we have confidence in this, that we know that this is going to do well and we stand behind the quality of it. Maybe that's just me, but that's the way that I read it. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And when I put it to you guys, 48% of you loved it. My God, and can I just say, I know you guys, you're so discerning. You're like really good. A lot of you guys are on no buys. 13% of you said that. And only 38% said not for me. So the fact that we had such a high love it, oh mama, that, that is saying something. We now have another indie brand. This is Ladybug Glow Cosmetics. And they haven't been around for that long. I think definitely less than two years and they've kind of been slowly bringing out things. They're a little bit sporadic in terms of their releases and their general online presence. Because they, even when they came out with this, they were like, we're gonna be going offline for a little bit. And I'm like, what is going on here? But they said that they're still gonna ship this out. It's the their Creatura palette. And it includes eight matte one holochrome, which I think is quite interesting, two multi-chromes and one duochrome. And it's $37, which in my mind isn't bad at all for a palette that has all of those different kind of tones and formulas. I just find it, I, like I, I wanna talk a little bit about the brand because I feel like that's somewhat necessary. I remember a, over a year ago, they were given an awful lot of flack online, unnecessarily, in my opinion, because people were getting annoyed that they were essentially white labeling. So they were taking uh, palettes that already existed, but putting their own cover on it and selling it on. And people were like, ah, oh, we're really annoyed about this because you're selling this um, at a markup. And it's like, yeah, that's, that's what businesses do. Like, I always find the phrase cash grab to re be really interesting because it's like, well, yes, people do things for money. Like, we have to live. It's a capitalist society, Frank. I mean, I'm just saying. So people were really giving this brand quite a lot of flack. And I think that's very difficult for an indie brand because usually it's just one person behind it. So people were being very like, me about it. And look, I get it, you know, where we're trying to save money and hey, if you like the palette, maybe go and get it through the, the wholesaler to start off with. But I will also say a lot of these brands have to start off small with these sort of things, build from the profit of that, and then they can start making their own sort of palettes. So I don't know what's going on there. The fact that the brand owner kind of dips in and out. Maybe it's like some of the stuff that came up from them uh, from like way back then. And I don't know if they're still getting any negativity. I hope not. Um, and I hope in general that they're they're doing well. I mean, let's be real. It's nice to try and take care of each other. I think that this color story is really, really pretty. I love that kind of sagey green down in the bottom right corner. I think that is so, so pretty. You know me, I love greens. I think this is wonderful. I really, really like this color story. I think it's curated really, really well. The little creature on the front is so, so strange. It reminds me a little bit, and I said this in a short, 
of this little toy that Dewey and Malcolm in the Middle gets really obsessed about and he really wants to buy. And in the ads, the creature is all like, oh, if you buy me, everyone will love you and you'll be the best child ever. I'm gonna show you a picture of that thing now. And please tell me whether or not you think they look similar. Because in my mind, they really, really do. I think this is really quite nice. It's $37, like I said. I don't think that's bad for a £12 palette that includes holochromes, multichromes, duochromes and some mattes. I will also say I like the mix of the mattes to the duochrome holochrome, right? It's two thirds to those holochrome duochrome shades. So I think that's actually pretty darn reasonable. It's not bad. I'm gonna have a link down below. Some of them are affiliated. Anything that has an asterisk is affiliated. Let's be for real on that. When I put it to you guys, 17% of you loved it, 75% said not for me, and 8% of you said that you were on a no or a low buy. And I have to apologize for an error with this one because when I was talking about Colorgram's collaboration with Powerpuff Girls, I was like, oh, I wonder will Colourpop do this? Colourpop had already done this back in 2021. They had already done a collaboration with Powerpuff Girls, but such is the tenacity with which Colourpop produces stuff that I actually forgot about it. I will say I had a look at the collection again and I was like, ah, I see why I forgot about it. It wasn't all that memorable. But let's talk about this one. This is Colourgram and they have a couple of things out with Powerpuff Girls. Now, if you haven't heard of Colourgram, they are an Asian beauty brand specifically out of Korea and you can buy them through Korea beauty box if you are interested. These are available now. So there's two eyeshadow palettes, there's three highlighters, there's four lip glosses, three eyeliners and there's a face powder. I want to talk about the little uh, highlighters first because as I said in my little video, I mean they're really cute. There's, there's something like really quite child friendly about them. When I was looking them up, um, it was one of the few things I could actually get a price on. They're $10.99 each, which it's kind of mid range, I think. It's a bit more expensive than I thought it was going to be for the product itself. Like I like the kind of packaging of it. It looks quite cute. See, there's something very na naughty about it. Like the whole, like the colors in and of themselves obviously link back to the Powerpuff Girls. There's something very fresh about them. And I think the little cube that they're in is adorable but I just cannot get over the heart because all I can think of is nipples I can't help it I'm very very broken I also think it's very very frustrating because I have looked all over the internet for this and I cannot find swatches and I'm like $10.99 I know isn't a huge amount of money but it is it's still money still quite a bit in my in my opinion and I'm like if you want to sell this please give us some swatches I do appreciate that they have a color for each of the girls that's fantastic then the next thing I want to talk about is obviously these little eyeliners I mean they're fine they're felt tip eyeliners it looks like they have a decent sort of a, a point on them again I'm a little bit miffed that I couldn't find any sort of pictures and I scoured online who knows you'll probably look it up now and be like Teresa I found this fine thank you <laughs> thank you I'm very bad at researching these things but I couldn't find any pictures of swatches and it drove me a little bit bananas because I'm like what shade of blue is this what shade of pink is this how opaque is it do we have to build it up because like it could be quite interesting I think felt tip liners are quite good if you're a bit nervous of doing eyeliner because you can get a little bit more uh, control over that than you can with say a liquid eyeliner so that's quite smart I don't know how much that one is I couldn't find any information on that they are hard to find here in Ireland I'd say probably if you're in Korea um, or generally in Asia they'd probably pop up on your browser a little bit quicker there's also this face powder which is has like this sort of a, a lavender undertone so I'm not sure what exactly it's meant to be like is it meant to be like a color correcting or is it meant to just be a finishing powder a setting powder I've not really seen a purple setting powder before like I've seen pinky setting powders before let's be real people have been putting the pinky one under their eyes and whatever like that's fine it looks beautiful Again, I'm really intrigued by this because I haven't really seen that before. So I'd have loved to have seen that in operation, but they're kind of missing out on that, which I think is a little bit, I don't want to say shit, but like it is. 
<laughs> then they only have two eyeshadow palettes. I say only. I think it's weird. Like, why did they decide not to do, you know, the, the third Powerpuff Girl? Like, you know, very, very strange that they, they just went for the two there. However, as I said previously, I do feel that they went for these two Powerpuff Girls because it's a little bit easier to do a more neutral colour story with greens and pinks than it is with a blue. Like that pop of blue would look a little bit whatever. And K-Beauty is way more subtle. It's stunning when you look at it. It's not necessarily my aesthetic, but it looks beautiful on people. So I can kind of see why they did that. And like the shimmers look quite promising. I, I do think they look quite nice. Personally, you know me, I love something that's like, bam, color. But I can see this working for quite a few people and this works for the market. I think they were very, very smart on that. I personally just don't like the packaging. I know that's such a pernickety little thing, but I'm like, hmm, yeah, it isn't a very expensive brand. However, the plastic on the outside just makes it look really like uh, kiddish. And I think this is a real misstep because anyone who's like looking for Powerpuff Girls stuff now is like in the late 20s, 30s because that's the stuff that we grew up on. I don't think there's many modern children who are into that. So I'm just like, oh, would you not try and, like you could even do a cardboard packaging, that's totally fine. Um, but that felt a bit weird now. So I don't like the mix between the heart shapes and the circles, that's, that's a me issue. I know that's a me issue but that's how I feel on it. Then of course they have their lip glosses. They have uh, four different colors. Well, one is clear and then three are actually colors. And there is enough of a difference between each of the colors that you're like, okay, these are distinct enough. They do look quite pretty. I will still say that there's something very weird about the lid of that lip gloss. It looked questionable. <laughs> But I would say they're probably easier to twist on and twist off. So actually in that sense, that's fantastic. They look quite nice. Again, these are all very natural wearable colors, which makes sense for the demographic and the population that they're going for. This is a very smart business decision. Like I can see why they did that. It's not bad. Do I think it's necessarily the absolute best collaboration Powerpuff Girls has put out? No, not really. I think, it's a lot better than the Bobby Brown one. That was really, really strange. If I rank them, <laughs> and you're gonna be surprised. Revolution, I think, was one of the better ones in the sense that they had like a diversity of stuff and the colors seemed to make sense. I don't like Revolution myself, but like the concept was a little bit more there. Color Pop was probably second, and they're second because I kind of forgot about them. <laughs> Uh, the products themselves weren't were too bad. And then I think Colorgram and, and then Bobby Brown. It's not the worst, definitely not the worst. But my gorgeous friends, when I put it to you guys, 9% of you wanted and loved the lip glosses. 0% of you loved the eyeshadow palettes, which I'm gonna be honest, I don't see that as a massive surprise because you guys are like me, you like the same sort of things, which is totally fair. 6% of you loved the highlighters, but again, 15% were like, oh, I wanna see the swatches. The eyeliners, 4% of you loved it, and that face powder, 4% of you loved it as well. Now we have Juvia's Place and they have have released their blushed liquid blush lighter and there's seven shades and they're 16 euro 95 each basically each of these shades has like a little bit of a, a sheen to them whether it's like a golden sort of a not duochrome but like a little bit of sheen to it or like a pearl essence to it they look really pretty in terms of like the splodges that they've given and I'm a little bit again miffed and I've said this about Juvia's Place I don't know how many times it's fine to give us a little splodge on a white background Around, but that's not going to show us how this actually operates in the skin because all of these things look so different when you start thinking about undertones you know that's why purple looks so an amazing on a deeper skin tone as a blush and it could look a little bit weird on somebody like me who's really really pale with slightly more pink undertones it'd probably make me look like a TB patient so I really wish that they showed this on several different models and they've kind of done that on the cover page if you go onto Juvia's place you kind of see these absolutely stunning models uh, and they're presumably wearing these products but I, a I don't know which products there are because there, there's seven of them so you're, you're kind of guessing and and b when you actually then go through that routing page to the actual product itself they don't have any of the models wearing them on the routing page which is really strange like when you go through there and you pick up one of the ones you know like pinky rose or whatever I can't even think of the names but when you 
select them, all you see is essentially what I'm showing you guys right now, just those tubes and the little swatches on a white background. And I'm like, I want to see it. I'm a human being. I want to see what these look like. Because I think these have a lot of potential. I think they show some beautiful, beautiful shades. Juvia's Place do some very, very nice products. They're extremely pigmented. I will say they're not as easy to get as they were once. Years ago, I remember you used to be able to get them at Beauty Bay, then you could get them at Superdrug. And I don't know what is going on there but they're very, very difficult to source these days. Of course, there has also been some, I don't want to say drama, because drama kind of like undermines things, but there was a major issue there about two to three years ago where they had put up a video of an influencer using their products and they said a very derogatory term. And I think just since then, they haven't been able to reclaim where they were. Nothing has happened since. They haven't gotten into any trouble since, but I think because they never like really addressed it, they just kind of went, oh, this person's views doesn't, you know, respond to ours. So therefore, and I was like, okay, that's grand, but maybe, maybe deal with it a little bit more. But what do I know? I'm literally just a consumer. Um, the thing is, I think they have nice products, but whatever way it seems to be that they are running their business, it's not going that great for them. I find it very strange that they've had, you know, collaborations, well, not collaborations, but they've had business dealings with the likes of Beauty Bay, uh, with Superdrug, but Superdrug, it seems, are phasing them out. Uh, you can't get them on Beauty Bay anymore. So I'm like, what is going on there? Is there like a breakdown in communications? What is happening? And I think this links in with what I was saying about that whole thing with that reel that was shown on Instagram that they got into trouble for. I think there's just a very, very poor amount of communication here when it comes to their media management and overall PR, because the products themselves are actually pretty good. However, that is not enough for a brand to do well these days. You could have a fantastic product, but people are much more socially conscious these days. They're thinking about a lot more things. And the thing is, we have a lot of brands to choose from. It's not like how it was in 2008. We have hundreds, if not thousands of brands to choose from. So I think Juvia's Place, they need to do an awful lot more to really pull things out of the bag. As I've said before, I have Juvia's Place stuff. I've really enjoyed their quality, but they're not really what I consider purchasing from that much anymore for a variety of reasons, but mostly because they're just hard to get these days. There's potential there. They're not showing off their products properly. Even with their eyeshadow palettes, they don't swatch them. And I'm like, what are you doing? What's happening? I know if you're in the US, it's a little bit easier. I think they have Juvia's Place in like Ulta, so you can go in and swatch. But for those of us in Europe or Asia or Australia, we're really taking a little bit of a gamble here as to what's going on. So I don't know. I think they need an awful lot more work on several different aspects of their business design. I don't think they're like a lost cause by any means, but I think it's definitely something that they would need to review. That was very rambly, but those are my general thoughts. The actual uh, blush lighter, I mean, I, I hate when people try and mesh things together. I get that they're being like, it's a blush and it's a highlighter. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I, I'd honestly just prefer like a term like glowy blush. <laughs> I am such a basic me, but I cannot stand when people are trying to mesh things together. It, 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 it bothers me. Like when Be Perfect did their cronzer, which was a cream bronzer, and I'm like, oh no. I, I feel the exact same way when people try and mesh celebrity names together to make their couple name. I'm like, mm-mm, I don't like this. <laughs> it really bothers me. Anyways, when I put this one to you guys, 18% of you loved it. 49% said that it wasn't for you, and 33% said that you need to see it on the face, which I agree. Then we knew that this was happening. This is the Glamlight Betty Boop collaboration, and it is available right now as I'm filming. I don't know how this is gonna do. Um, and the reason that I say this is, I think if this had come out a year ago, this would have just, Whew, flown out the doors. I'm not saying that it's not going to fly out the doors uh, as it is because 
it hasn't dropped as I'm filming. <laughs> It'll drop shortly after. But I feel like glam light are decreasing in popularity because they've gone a bit overzealous, i.e. too many launches, too many IPs. Like it's gone the way of ColourPop. And I don't mean like in terms of quality, I think glam light's quality is absolutely fantastic. And the price, spectacular. Really, I, I genuinely sit up at night sometimes <laughs> wondering, how did they do it? How do they keep the price so low, but the quality so high and pay for IP? I don't know. I th There must be funders. I don't know. So then I'm like, can we, can we say that this is an indie brand? Who knows? So I think because they've kind of been overproducing and doing too many things, people are kind of getting a bit, huh, whatever. However, Betty P Boop is such a popular icon, let's be real, across so many ages, I still think this will do really, really well. And that's probably where Glamlight will keep themselves going, is the fact that they will draw in collectors of various IPs and introduce themselves to the brand that way. So I think in that way, it's a very, very clever business strategy. There's a few things to this. Obviously, there's the mirror, which we're not that surprised about. They kind of showed that very, very early on. They have been doing a mirror as part of every single collection at this point. That's retailing for $25. They obviously then have their Boop Oopa Doop palette for $32. There's a mascara, which I wasn't that surprised about because, I mean, Betty Boop is known for those fabulous eyes. That's retailing for $15. I wonder if it's similar to the previous mascaras that they've come out with. That'd be really interesting. I quite like the lip kit. It's just a lip liner and a red bullet lipstick. Really, really pretty for $14. There's a blush duo for $14. I'm not surprised at all that they also came out with some lashes. That was so, so smart. They're $12. I will say I was kind of surprised that they weren't more dramatic because their beautiful lashes do not get me wrong at all. But I mean, Betty Boop is like eyes. <laughs> So I thought we were going to see full on. I think they could have maybe done two sets of lashes, like that set that they have, and then an even more bam. That would have been really interesting, in my opinion. And they also have a lenticular motion bag for $35. Now that lenticular motion bag isn't actually available as part of the PR full box collection. You have to buy that separately if you are interested. So the thing is, let's talk about the palette first. I was very skeptical about what this was going to look like because I was like, oh my God, they've done so many color stories at this point. How are they gonna make this different? And I saw like reds and grays and I was like, oh God, it's gonna look like their Chucky palette, the crazy in love. They're just gonna dupe themselves. But the thing is, not only have they not duped themselves, they've also made sure that they're coming out with a new formula, which has piqued my interest. If I'm 100% honest, I'm like, okay, I wanna know. I do wanna know because I really like Glamlight's formula and they have started shipping to Ireland. Ireland. They started shipping to Ireland several months ago and I have been making up for last time. <laughs> uh, oh, it's been a whole thing. They also have the palette with this cute like lenticular thing. Can I just say I'm very proud of the fact that I now know what lenticular is rather than calling it a flippy flappy screen thing. <laughs> but I think it looks so so cute. The price is really really good. I think this is a really interesting version of Valentine's Day because this is obviously it's their Valentine's launch but they've done this without being like overly like I love you, you love me, nah, nah, nah. It's cutesy without being like romantic. And the color story I think is very, very interesting. It makes sense to me. Do I need it? Absolutely not. I know I don't, so I'm actually being a very good girl and skipping it this time around. I say this time around, who knows if it ever goes on sale. <laughs> I'm not ruling it out. The mirror is adorable. Let's be 100% certain. They're doing so well with their mirrors. Like every single release has had a mirror. I will say there's some that are better than others. Some felt a little bit like we thought about this for all of two seconds, but this is really adorable. Like her legs are the handle. That's so cute. And it's a big enough mirror to actually be functional. So I super appreciate that. Fabulous. The mascara, again, I, it looks fairly standard. I'd love to know, is it the same as, you know, the one that I think they did one for was it the Scooby-Doo collection so I'd love to know if it's the same thing if so I think that's quite smart to like repackage existing stuff that's clever do that very very good the little bag I mean that looks adorable let's be for real the blushes I don't know I, I feel like it's a little bit too similar to stuff that they've done already um and I couldn't find swatches <laughs> 
as I'm filming, but I'm sure that, you know, we'll have swatches in the interim. I will say the shades themselves make an awful lot of sense for Betty Boop, like she didn't wear like oranges or whatever, it was gonna be pink, it was always gonna be a pinky toned blush, so I think that makes sense, and I will say, and this is gonna sound so bizarre, I'm glad they didn't do a highlighter. That's not because I don't like their highlighter formula, I fucking love their highlighter formula, but it wouldn't have made sense. It wouldn't have made sense with this IP to do a highlighter, so I think that's very, very smart. The lip set, I mean, I think it's absolutely disgustingly cute, uh, and for $14, I'm livid. I really like it. It's red. It's a red lipstick. I really like it. As I said, I'm not going to get it right now, but it could fall into a bag at some point, so I'm not totally against it. But I, again, I do feel like Glamlight are getting to that point where, ooh, and it happened with Colourpop, that people are going to get palette fatigue, that they're going to be like, there's too much. But I think what will save them is the fact that they're doing all of these like collaborations. So the makeup lovers themselves are going to get palette fatigue, but all of these new people are going to be introduced to the brand because they love Garfield, they love Betty Boop, they love... Freddy. <laughs> Can you imagine? I love Freddy. He's not a very lovable character, is he? Freddy Krueger, I mean. Not like Freddy from, oh well, he's Fred from Scooby-Doo. <laughs> I don't know why I suddenly decided I was more friendly with Fred, but it, it's an interesting one it, and I'll be interested to see what the story is, particularly with their new Kiss one because they've shown some sneak peeks there. I haven't shown any of that on my socials yet because I'm like, we don't have enough information on that. So I just don't want to be weird and drip feed stuff. Anyways, the reason why I think that uh, this could be a <laughs> collection amongst makeup lovers are your stats because 16% of you loved the eyeshadow palette, 25% of you did say that you are intrigued by that new formula, 30% loved the mirror, 34% loved the lip kit which I agree with, the lashes didn't do great, 8% of you loved it while 23% said that you wished that there was a more dramatic style, 15% of you loved the mascara and 25% of you loved the blush duo. I'll be honest lads, it feels really ridiculous to be talking about this because it's not necessarily new. This has been a product that has been out for so long but it took forever to get here and we know why it took forever to get here. It's because Urban Decay's own UK brand was shutting down their website so it seems that behind the scenes they were negotiating a couple of deals because now the palettes are available. The first one that came on stream was the Ace Rider so that's available on sites like Look Fantastic, Beauty Bay etc. Hurrah! We're so excited! <laughs> Why? Why did they do that? But here's the thing, they've also released the Galactic Cowgirl. Mmm, the more colourful one, which if I'm 5 million percent honest, that was the one that I'm really, really interested in. But it seems to be that that one is exclusive to Boots. And, and, it's for 42 euro. Whereas if you wanted to get the other moon dust also in Boots, which weirdly it's not in stock. Anyways, that's a whole different thing. That's 35 euro. So we're paying an extra 7 euro because obviously Boots have done a deal with Urban Decay and now obviously that costs them quite a bit so they're trying to get back some of that money and I'm like you bastards. <laughs> I still fell for it, I still went off and I, I purchased it today because it came onto the website today on Friday. So I was like well that's the one I really definitely 100% wanted. I also want the other one too but I'm gonna wait for that one to come to boots because I'm like well I'm gonna get me some points. <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit annoyed that it took so so long to get here but I get why they were doing that they were like getting all their like ducks in a row and it does kind of cost a brand to sell things through a retailer they have to sell them x amount of units so I guess they were trying to project how things were going so maybe they were using the US um, in terms of their data the US and Canada to kind of project how well it would do in Europe because the thing is if I go on to uh, Urban Decay's US site or if I go into Sephora both of these products are now no longer in stock. So obviously they sold out there. So they managed to leverage that and be like, hey, here's why you're gonna pay quite a bit of money. So um, yeah, I ended up, like I said, getting the more colorful one. I will get the more neutral one as well because I'm stupid, that's right. But my gorgeous European friends, I do have some links down below if you are interested. But I, I will say, I do feel a little bit like, ah, oh, that it took so long, but at the same time, 
I would okay, you're, fi you're finally doing something interesting. So do you know what? I'll, I'll let it be. I'm, I'm glad that you're innovating to some degree. What I put it to you guys, 15% of you loved it, 64% said not for me, and 21% said that you were annoyed that it took so long to get to Europe. Honestly, same. What was happening? Was it being transported by a carrier pigeon? We'll never really know. The next couple of things that I want to talk to you guys about, I didn't put in my stories, I didn't put into YouTube shorts, because I was like, there is no time. As you guys might know, I am working full time in one job, but I also have another job, and I've, I have a lot of things. <laughs> So sleep tends to take a back seat. So I just didn't get a chance to talk to you guys about this, but I thought that these kind of releases were still worth talking about. The first one that I want to talk about is House Lab. That's right, Lady Gaga or Lady Gaga. This is her PhD. Excuse me, PhD. When did it get its doctorate? Who knows? Uh, maybe it's one of those honorary doctorates. PhD hybrid lip glaze. I mean, I don't even know what to say at this point. Hybrid lip glaze. Fair enough. Um, uh, it's a first of its kind skincare infused lip plumping glaze. I mean, to be fair, I haven't really heard of anything like that. With burn free lip plumping after two weeks of continuous use. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. Um, I mean, I love the idea of having plumper lips without the burning sensation, but I don't know if I necessarily trust the whole, oh, after two weeks of continuous use, because I'm also very forgetful and will forget to use something every single day. I'm very good with my skincare these days, but I will forget with things like that. I don't know. And they've also gone on to say they're clean lads. You know how I feel about that. And it's also hypoallergenic, which I also feel whenever I hear hypoallergenic I think of plasters or as the Americans call them band-aids uh, and pillows. I don't know if that's the theme that she was going for but I suppose pillow lips is a thing. It's a four in one hybrid so apparently it gives you the hydration of a lip oil. Lip oils are lip glosses. Can we can we just stop? The high shine of a gloss. Girl it's the same thing. Like I, I can't even. The cushion of a balm and the volumizing effect of a plumper. Okay and then down below it says house tech powered trademark. Oh, it's all very official. House Labs Poly Plumper Peptide Complex. Oh my god, that is a tongue twister. Plumped lip appearance with cutting edge combination of Maxi Lip TM and Volu Lip TM without any uncomfortable irritation. I don't know, I'm very uncomfortably irritated in general. Then they say that they have vegan collagen and prickly pear oil. The thing about collagen is it, it's quite a heavy and dense weight, so it doesn't tend to sink into the skin. It tends to like sit on the skin. So I don't know what they're doing there. Now I will say prickly pear is very very good for hydration so I think that's quite interesting. But they say that the moisture barrier feels boosted with added hydration and lips feel nourished and smoother. So this is coming out by the way February 7th and there are six shades. They're $26 each. Very very spendy. But in general house labs are extremely spendy. I love <laughs> they're like they even put together this this picture which I have to show you guys because I find it very funny ways to glaze just in case you didn't know how to do it just glaze i.e just put the product on you know like you would with a gloss or and here's the real innovation line and glaze put on a lip liner and then put on the lip gloss I'm gonna call it gloss lads because uh, I am feeling spicy today and the final innovative suggestion uh, that they included was to line and fill and glaze that's right put a lip liner then a lip lipstick and then the glass on top. <laughs> I just love that they were like, we feel that we really need to explain this to you guys. Ah, <laughs> we know how to do these things. I think most people do. It feels like such an unnecessary thing to do. And they've also kind of put up the slide of like, or like the picture of, here's the PhD hybrid lip glaze and here's the PhD hybrid lip oil and here's how they're different. And I'm like, Okay, so it basically seems that the major difference is one is much more um, transparent than the other and one uh, plumps you, which, fair enough. I mean, it's grand. It's not for me, in case you can't tell, the shades look fine, but I don't, I, I can't, in my mind, spend $26 
for a, a plumping lip gloss. I just can't. And I don't trust people telling me that it's not going to burn when it's also plumping. And I will also say that I want to go back to the picture where they're saying burn free lip plumping after two weeks of continuous use. And then the asterisk is based on a third party consumer perception study of 35 panelists. There's so much going wrong there. At 35, that is a tiny, tiny sample size. I do appreciate that it's third party. So that's good. There's a little bit of bias omitted there. However, perception, based upon their perception, we have the placebo effect. People think that, you know, their lips look better just from using all sorts. I mean, that's why we have things like sugar pills. Why didn't they have a more objective standard of actually like measuring the lips? I mean, I'm just saying it's a really poor metric for doing these things. Sample size is terrible. Their, their way of measuring the variable is terrible. I, I don't trust that at all. There's part of me that almost, almost wants to get this and do a bad makeup science with it, you know, where I actually use statistics with this and test this over a period of time. Uh, but I, I don't want to. I am not spending $26 for this. I just think it's very, very silly. So I didn't obviously put it to you guys, but I'd love to know what you guys think down below. Are you similarly confused or are you, do you think this is great? If you do, that's fantastic. I'm delighted. I am all for us having very diverse views here. Wow, that is fantastic. Here for it. The next one that I want to talk about then is an indie brand based out of the UK. And I have some fabulous friends, so the likes of Not Your Basic Steph and Wilma Fingerdo, who have tried and really recommend this brand. And I haven't tried it myself, but this is a one of their new palettes, which is available right now for pre-order and it's their Divergence palette. So it's 15 pounds for 28 pounds. That's very good. In that you get nine mattes and six shifty chrome shade, I have to say. That's quite impressive for that price. It's kind of reminding me a little bit of Cosmic Brushes in terms of their pricing system. So that's pretty impressive. Um, the way that they've presented the swatches, I don't love. It doesn't look as professional as it could, but hey, it's an indie brand. They don't have the money to be filming that sort of thing. I think it's it looks decent. You know, the swatches look really, really interesting. And the color story is out there. It is all over the place. Um, it's not wildly cohesive to me, but it is fun. It's fun and I appreciate that. If there's something very psychedelic about it, which is quite funny because it's called Divergent. So yeah, it does feel very divergent. Like it's out there, it's loud, it's it's different. Yeah, I think this, this is quite nice. The shades themselves look really, really punchy when they're swatched like that. Yellow looks pretty damn good. It's very difficult, by the way, to find a decent yellow. I think they have like a good mix of neutrals in there. I think it's quite nice. And £28, it's not bad at all. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Lois Cosmetics Gone Rogue palette from back in the day. Like there's those pops of purple, etc. It's not a dupe at all. It's just giving me those vibes um, of that same kind of creativity and um, kind of like, oh, colour story, let's just play with colours, which I'm like, okay, that's quite cool. I, I'm really interested in that orangey shade up at the top. I think that looks really, really pretty. I'm kind of here for that. Um, as I said, I haven't put that to you guys, so I'd love to know your opinions on that right now. Then we have Give Me Glow Cosmetics, and this, it is and it isn't a new thing in the sense that it's a new bundle of existing shades as part of their Valentine's Day collection. So this is their Love You Very Much nine pan pressed singles bundle. So it comes with this fabulous little outer packaging, which looks so cute. I love that Give Me Glow have kind of been revamping the brand. It looks adorable. As you're watching this, this will be available. So if you have a lot of Give Me Glow stuff, be very careful. Don't end up buying this because these are pre-existing shades. Okay, go through your collection, see what you have, but you can get like that empty palette anyway. So like you could slot them in and out. If you're running low, that could be a great one. This is a very like expected color story. Let's be 100% real, like the pinky, purpley, violety, ready. Yeah, for Valentine's Day. This makes sense. I think it's very cohesive, very cute. I kind of love all the glitter of the palette. That's adorable. I think they'll do quite well just in terms of their empty palettes. They look super, super cute. I have a couple of Give Me Glow things. I really enjoy them. Um, they're obviously quite hard to get over here in Ireland, so you do have to buy them through their US site, but I enjoy them. I think that's cute. So if you're looking at this and you don't have any Give Me Glow, 
and you like it, that might be something to try out. Then the very last thing that I wanted to talk about is Creature Cosmetics. And this is their collaboration. And they're the first people who have gotten the official licensing for Vampira Bella Lugosi. Uh, so this is their Bloodsucker collection. And there's quite a few things in this. They have a very big 16 pan eyeshadow palette. Then there's two separate uh, five pan shadow palettes that can apparently be used as face palettes. There's two push up creme lipsticks. There's a makeup bag and a limited edition box set as well, which you can put your like bags and stuff in, which I think look really, really cute. Let's talk about that big eyeshadow palette first. I mean, sweet Jesus, it's they've put a lot of effort into this. They've really thought about the IP. This is very gothic, very interesting. I've heard good things about the brand themselves. It's really clear that they enjoy the origin of the IP. So they're probably fans because they thought about this quite a bit. Do I love a red and black eyeshadow palette? No, but that's me. That's who cares what I think. I think this is constructed really, really well. I love the fact that it opens up like that and that it's like two halves of them meeting. I think that is really, really adorable. Such a fun way of looking at Valentine's Day as well, but with a, a more like horror undertone. I think that is super, super cute. The mirror, I don't think they needed to have in there because it's not big enough to be functional and that was going to cost more money. So I think they could have brought down the price if, if they hadn't included that. I just don't see it being a functional mirror, particularly when it's on the side of the palette like that. Again, that's just me being very, very, very pernickety. The Bloodsucker bag, oh my God, I think that is hella cute. I love that it's like shaped as like a little uh, coffin. And I feel like the uh, graphics that they've used on this are super, super cute. It would depend as to how much this costs. I would assume it's gonna be the same as like Glamlight-esque. So like 35-ish dollars, maybe $40. And if you absolutely love the IP, then I think that's a great little find. I I definitely know people who would be so into this and that they'd love it and apparently the brand is very very good and then I don't have any pictures of the lipsticks um, but I do have pictures of the packaging of their contour powder and their kind of highlight and blush so I'm assuming that maybe they're like in sticks very strange but they do look quite cute and then the five pan shadow palettes they have one for each character they look really nice I will say as well if you go on to their Instagram they look a little bit different based upon kind of the angles that they've taken them on so it does look like there's like a little bit of shiftiness to them so I think that is super super interesting um it, the, I will also say like they will probably cost a certain amount because again making palettes with those unusual shades shapes and those sort of cutouts do cost that little bit more so I suspect that those five pounds I can't see them being less than like $18 just because of the unusual shape but I could see people getting a decent amount of use out of that I, I'd be hesitant to call it a face palette I can see that maybe there's some shades in there for contour um but and maybe one or two for blush but I wouldn't really call it a face palette that feels a little bit not quite right. Unless you're going for very gothic, in which case, ho ho, well done you, this could be fantastic. I think this is really well done. You can kind of tell when something is a passion project that somebody really enjoys it. And this very much feels like Creature Cosmetics kind of looked at this IP, they chased after it and were like, this is my thing and I enjoy that. And you know what? That's what makeup's all about, finding stuff, enjoying it, expressing that creativity and that joy. So I'm kind of here for it, even though it's not um, a launch that I would personally get. But my gorgeous friends, that's essentially it. That is all of the new stuff that we wanted to talk about this week. Uh, there were quite a few things that came in towards the end, weren't there? Some little surprise hitters. But I do have my favourite comment, and this comes from the fabulous and beyond 86, who said, thank you for the review of the releases this week. You did a lovely job. Also, your cat mug is adorable. It makes me think of all your outside cats. That's how I know that you've been watching the rest of my videos. I so appreciate it um, because I sometimes do swatching Sundays. I want to get back to them at some point, but life has been hectic. But anyone who has watched those videos will see that sometimes the stray cats who basically live outside my house now <laughs> turn up and they're like hello you're looking at the eyeshadows in the sunlight please feed us so thank you so much for watching my videos i really do appreciate it but my gorgeous friends 
that's it. That's the end of this video. Thank you so much to all of you guys for watching, for commenting, for tagging me in things throughout the week. I so appreciate it and I appreciate you. Do please like, comment and subscribe. Turn on that notification bell and do please share because sharing is caring, except of course for STDs, in which case just wrap it up. Don't be gross. But that's it. That's the end of the video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.